Next up, we have my dear friend, Kamara Toffolo. Uh, we're gonna talk about overcoming imposter syndrome. Kamara is a resume writer, LinkedIn consultant, and job search strategist who helps her clients worldwide dare to work differently. Kamara was recognized as a LinkedIn top voice in 2020 and was also named by JobScan as the number one job search expert to follow on LinkedIn in 2019. She's been featured in major media, including Forbes, Business Insider, Inc., the Wharton Business School Radio, and LinkedIn News, among others. Prior to making her mark in career development, Kamara spent 12 years in a financial services and technology industries working for SMBs and Fortune 500 companies. Let's dive in. Go, Kamara. All right, and welcome her to the stage. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. Good. This is like mini summit. It is. It is. And talk about imposter syndrome. Hello, I'm having it right now coming on after two TED Talk speakers. Hello. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> you're LinkedIn top voice. You're LinkedIn. Still, well, I've I'm never sorry. done a TED Talk. Thank you. <laughs> Let's get some words of encouragement for Kamara here, guys. <laughs> please, please, please. I need it. <laughs> Thanks, Diana. This has been amazing. Look, they're like, go, Kamara. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. I love it. Oh I'm feeling the love. I, I love having you here on, on, on my show again. I just had you like last year in December and you had me in November. And I just yeah. love that you and I keep supporting each other. Like that's me what too. I'm so grateful for. Me that too. we're continuing to elevate each other there. So thank you. Thank you for having me back. I, I'm, I'm so excited <laughs> about this summit. This is such a, a great group of women that you've gathered. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I was listening to Jasmine's and Keika's and learning all sorts of stuff. So yeah. All of yeah. So why don't we kick off here? Tell us about your cultural upbringing. What's one cultural value that had an impact on you, good or bad? Sure. So um, my cultural back upbringing, um, I'm mixed race. So um, my uh, maternal side is Japanese. My uh, father's side, is that fraternal? <laughs> is mostly German. Uh, so, but I'm more in touch with the Japanese side of things, which I think is pretty common when it's your mother's heritage. And, um, and uh, I've also lived in Japan. And from a cultural upbringing point of view, it was confusing at times because because we lived in a predominantly Caucasian community. Um, and also, we, my mother does not speak Japanese. Um, my grandparents were um, in the internment camps during World War II. So they were encouraged to assimilate following the war. And so a lot of the language was lost between those generations. So um, yeah, it was confusing at times. But um, but uh, it was, it you know, I'm very proud of my heritage. And um in terms of a value, uh, I would say that uh, cultural values were well retained. And one of those that my mother instilled on us is attention to detail, uh, which is very common if you ever have had sushi, if you ever <laughs> have uh, seen ikebana or bonsai. Uh, attention to detail is a big deal in the Japanese uh you know, a culture <laughs> and um, the pursuit of perfection almost. And so that had positive impact, obviously, but negative as well, especially as I was launching my business, getting kind of paralysis in the uh, pursuit of perfection, you know, PPP, I guess. And um, yeah, so it's something that I have an internal conflict with, if I'm being totally honest, um, because I'm all about launching imperfectly. I think we've talked about that or uh yeah. perfect imperfection or something like that yeah. uh so um that's something i i have some conflict with internally that i'm always dealing with but anyway oh, so that's yeah that. so let's talk about the challenges that you faced in your current business how did you handle them in my current business um so challenges that i faced uh was kind of the transition um i certainly dealt with uh my fair share of imposter syndrome so to speak um coming from a background in financial services and making such a huge pivot into the career space not having that hr background not having that recruiting background um and i still think about it to this day like well what if i had that i could be more credible but you know i've been in it now six years so i think i'm 
oh, okay. <laughs> I think I know what I'm talking about to a certain extent. And um, <laughs> so, well, but it is. It, you knowledge, but you and I, like, I've sent over like about a hundred clients to you there. Like, I know. <laughs> I should not be saying that. <laughs> So many amazing clients. All my clients have been like 100% satisfied. So oh, I got to give you a go there. <laughs> thank you very much. I really appreciate that. So um, yeah, but of course, you know, not having the traditional qualifications, I'll say, mm -hmm. to do what I do. Is there anything traditional to being a resume writer, though? But not having those traditional uh, qualifications, you know, were what caused me some struggles, but I, I think I've overcome them for the most part. Yeah. Thank you for just your vulnerability and sharing here. I, I, oh, I love you. it. You're being raw and real here. And I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this. Like when you're starting something new or your own business or new job, that you may feel like, hey, I don't have this or I don't have this traditional background. Mm -hmm. um, you know, will I be successful or can I do this? Right. Like, can you guys relate to that there? So, so Kamara, why do you do what you do? Mm. What proud of? Yeah. So I do what I do just in order in two words to help. Um, so it's, uh, it's been, um, leaving financial services where I didn't have a, a feel like I had a direct, direct impact on, um, the value that, or the results I was providing. Uh, now I feel like I can see those, the results of, of the help that I'm providing. Uh, so it's really truly to help. Uh, in terms of um, launching my YouTube uh, video as, or I'm sorry, YouTube channel, as well as my um, Office Hours live show, which you were on, uh, that um, that was born of, of course, wanting to help, um, but um, really wanting to help people during this difficult time uh, that we're all in. So, yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Thank you. So let's dive into your topic. Over sure. Imposter syndrome. Yeah. What triggers imposter syndrome and how does one know they have imposter syndrome? Yeah. So I think Jasmine really um, hit the nail on the head earlier when, when you were chatting with her. Um, it's really about self-doubt. It all boils down to doubt. Um, and so doubting ourselves, um, you know, despite being qualified or despite being capable, having that doubt that is just holding us back from doing what we know we can do, but for some reason doubt. Um, and that's really what it is. It's, um, it's holding you back. That's how we know that we have imposter syndrome from what, from my experience is it holds us back from taking action, uh, mm -hmm. holds us back from applying for a job holds us back from asking for a promotion. Um, and um, it's really something you see a lot amongst women um, mm -hmm. because um, we're, we're conditioned in a different way than men are in terms of how we perceive ourselves, how we talk about our own value. Um, and um, in being conditioned that way, it can be very challenging to actually not start to doubt ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Good. I have a question here from Eula. Um, what do you think of the saying, fake it until you make it? <laughs> I, I, I like it. I, I'm not sure I like the phrasing of it. I wish we could come up with something else, but it's catchy, right? Uh, yeah. I, I think that oftentimes we need to flex the muscle before it can get stronger, essentially. So sometimes it's just about taking the action um, and I found that I did that in my own businesses. I just like took the action uh, and um, I did kind of fake it until I could make it. And um, yeah, I think I think it's something that can help uh, you kind of get over that hurdle of doubting yourself and also build your confidence along the way because you're taking that action, you're you're executing, and that can prove to you that you're quite capable. Yeah, yeah. I was listening to a live yesterday, um, Jennifer Brick show. She was talking to yeah. uh, Jacob. I forgot his last name, but he's a uh, certified firewalker. And oh, certified. Glass. Yeah, certified firewalker, walked on glass and has all those done the, the, the arrow breaking as well. And he talks about, you know, that ties into this is it's not just about mind over matter, but it's getting priming yourself in the right state, the right state of mind mm. that you can do anything. Like it's it's in that state so that you're just in that zone, essentially, um, in order to move uh, forward there. And I really believe this when it comes to job seekers going for interviews or networking, you have to prime yourself 
you know, in that state of mind. It's not as about faking it, but you got to work on that mindset and the body to go in with strength and power and confidence. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. And we can definitely dig into that as well. I have some thoughts on that. So, okay. Yeah. Let's talk about how does imposter syndrome hinder in getting a job or promotion? Yeah. So it's, um, it really fit like almost physically holds us back from hitting send on an application. Um, it, it holds us back from, uh, asking for that promotion, making that business case for that promotion. Uh, and, um, it also can hold us back in kind of the pre-work in terms of not raising your hand for a particular project, um, you know, not uh, raising your hand to participate in a certain kind of leadership capacity uh, so that you can build more qualifications, which will further support you in overcoming that imposter syndrome. So it's really kind of a catch 22 cycle, ongoing cycle of, of um, just kind of, being held back by ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like I'm hearing it's just playing small, right? Like that just taking, you know, like more like smaller, it's like instead of taking bigger steps or bold move, you moves there, right? You betcha. Hold us back. Oh, I love that. Um, how to overcome imposter syndrome? What are some yeah. strategies or steps to take? Yeah, so um, really getting back in touch with facts. So, um, I'm not very good about talk, talking about strategies for shifting mindset um, because I, you know, I still am working on that myself. But um, what I am good with is getting back in touch with the facts about yourself so that you can renew faith in yourself. Yeah. And so um, the facts being, um, what have I accomplished in my work? Yeah. Uh, and so that's why it's so important to track your work wins on an ongoing basis um, because they're facts about you. you. Facts can't be disputed. And so that will allow you to kind of mitigate bringing the emotions into um, your perception of yourself or bringing what you believe into your qualifications. Um, and you can just look at the at the hard facts of this is what I've done. So that would be my first main suggestion is to really know what you've accomplished and track it on an ongoing basis. That totally makes sense. And I mean, this really ties in what you do as a resume writer that you're really good at pulling out all the facts so that you can highlight what makes them amazing. Um, I, I love that. Like it's just really getting into the, the facts of it. Like what's the truth of it? Exactly. What's the truth? What's the truth? Yeah. And it's just so easy to cloud the truth when we are in our, in our head. So just get it on paper or digital and yeah. just look at it. Like, and, and I feel like that helps us keep an objective viewpoint of what we've actually done because we're seeing it written down. We're not just like thinking about like, Oh, why am I qualified? Well, I think I'm qualified because, and that was something that, um, uh, Marie Zimanoff and I were chatting about last night during office hours is women tend to, and she, I think she even had a stat for it. Uh, she had a lot of great stats, but women tend to use language. Like I think, and I believe in their, um, resumes, LinkedIn interview stories, cover letters, and when they do that, it automatically discounts yeah. the great work that they've done. Uh, so what's more important is to just um, lead with, I did this, I led this, yeah. I executed this, um, save the think and believe for other yeah. conversations. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. The language matters there. Um, so how to stop selling yourself short in a resume mm -hmm. for LinkedIn profile? Yes, yes. So one area where I see people really sell or women, especially, but men do also do this as well, where it's kind of like an automatic way to sell yourself short in your resume in your LinkedIn is when people say, well, I can't take credit for that. It was a team effort. And yes, you can take credit for something that you contributed to. And there's a big difference between taking credit and taking all the credit. And so by no means am I suggesting taking all the credit for a team effort, but 
you need to honor your contribution to that team effort. So, uh, or to that actual achievement that was achieved as a collective. And so, um, I, that's how I'm seeing people sell themselves short by saying, um, you know, as part of a team, I did this. Um, you can put as part of a team and one, one great, uh, tip that Maria gave is you can put as part of a team at the end of the accomplishment bullet that you're writing, um, just, you know, for that clarity factor, but, um, really what we want to do on our resume on our LinkedIn is to, uh, use active verbs as she rem reminded me and pointed out. So there's that uh, factor. On LinkedIn, I see people um, selling themselves short by not fully using LinkedIn to its full advantage. There's so much great real estate on, link on our LinkedIn profiles that people forget to use, uh, or they just think uh, a LinkedIn profile should be short, so they just don't want to fill it, fill it out. Um, there's so much space. The summary portion I see so underused. Um, in not telling our stories, we want to use that to tell our stories, uh, descriptions of roles. We want to talk about the work that we were proud of, the work that we love doing. And as it relates to our current career direction. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, those are just a couple, a couple things. Oh, I love that. You know what? I totally agree with you that, you know, a lot of times I see like most people like don't really sell themselves on LinkedIn, but once they do it, it's like night and day. I've seen clients where it's like taking to the next level yes. and then they will get opportunities because it's like their brand elevated out there. A hundred percent. Yes. Amazing. Amazing. What does it mean to you to own your voice? value and visibility. Mm, good one. Yeah. I had to really noodle this one a bit. So, um, for voice to own your voice, uh, for me, that really means to know the messages that you want, that other people want to hear from you and tell those messages. Um, so particularly in your job search, what, what do future employers want to hear from me that shows that I'm qualified and to, communicate those, uh, to own your value. Similarly, it ties in with accomplishments and qualifications, but to understand that and own the fact that your grouping of skills, your skill set, your groupings of strengths are unique and they offer unique value that no one else can offer. Uh, so knowing where that uniqueness is. And then in terms of owning visibility is to always remember that you're your own best job search advocate. Uh, you're your own best advocate in everything. Um, and to show up where you want to be seen um, or where you need to be seen on a consistent basis. Oh, this is so good. Guys, type in your key learnings here. So many great tips. I'm loving this. This is so good. Nice. <laughs> I'm loving this. Like, I'm going to be listening back to the replay. Of, awesome. Of, it's like, it's very just motivational, inspiring. And you're just hearing from like, you know, women's like your stories and all that. Thank you so much. I love it. Where can people find you, Kamara? Well, I'm Kamara Toffolo everywhere. And so um, I've got my YouTube channel, Kamara Toffolo. Um, I think it's Kamara Toffolo Careers. My website, KamaraToffolo.com. Uh, I'm at Kamara Toffolo on Twitter, Kamara T on LinkedIn, and uh, also on Instagram, Kamara Toffolo. So I will see you there. <laughs> connect with her guys make sure to check out her youtube channel she has tons of great videos there and um she also does like a weekly live uh, as well i just love like the the ones where you help give feedback on people's resumes uh as well thank you thank you yeah those are a lot of fun thank you um, so much all right well thank you so much my friend thank you for having me <laughs> we always have a great time